Good morning. Is it still morning? Good afternoon. Good morning, coaches, depending on what part of the world you are in right now. Good morning. Good afternoon. I am coming on. I'm sitting here working. You know, it's Monday, late morning, early afternoon. And this morning, one of the things that crossed my mind is I thought about how tricky our brains are when it comes to trying to talk us out of things. Um, one of the things that I want you to be able to accept, realize, identify, analyze in your own behavior, in your own mindset, is that there are sacrifices that must be made to be successful. Hold on, I'm just letting some people know I'm on here. There are sacrifices that must be made to be successful. And those of you who have been in certification with me, you know that I have a saying I say constantly that says, it costs to be the boss. There's a cost to be the boss. And oftentimes you don't recognize exactly what that cost is. You can think, oh, it's, you know, long hours, it's, it's working long hours, it's chasing your dreams, it's, but the cost involved to go to where you want to go, to be who you want to be, to have the life you want to have is often very, it, not often, it's always personal, very personal. It is your fears, your doubts, your insecurities. It's the things you keep trying to go around instead of going through. I need someone to hear me this morning. It's the things you keep trying to go around instead of going through. And it's tricky. So it's trying to talk you out of doing and overcoming the fears that you need to overcome in order to be successful. It's trying to talk you out of doing live videos. Oh, I can record them and put them up. Oh, there's another software. Oh, I, you know, I, I'll write out a script. It's going to be great. No. What your brain is doing is trying to work around your fears trying to convince you that there's another way to get it done instead of conquering your fears, we will often find ourselves trying to go a different route. We're trying to get around the issue. And one of the issues that I've noticed when it comes to sabotaging your success, delaying your success, is you feed into the fears instead of overcoming them. Feeding into the fears instead of overcoming them. You have to begin to identify your self-sabotaging behaviors. You have to be able to start identifying. I'm operating in fear right now. I feel anxious right now. I gave a great example um, Saturday in the certified coaches call. I said last um, the week before last when I was on vacation in Charlotte, I was writing each morning. I woke up one morning to write, you know, I'm writing the new book and God started taking me in a new direction. And all of a sudden coaches, it was like, wait a minute, where is this book going? God, what are we doing? Whoa, 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 whoa. I thought I'm writing the millionaire coach book, self-help book, blueprint for success. And all of a sudden this book was going in a different direction. And guys, when I tell you this anxiety came over me because the direction that God was taking me in was much more personal. This book was almost like, oh, wait, it's an autobiography. You want me to write all my stories, all my craziness, all my issues, everything I had to overcome. You want me to tell the dirty, dirty. You want me to get so, whoa, wait a minute, God, wait. And for a lot of you, you guys look at me and you know, Rebecca's so vulnerable. She's so real. She shares so much. I do. But do I share everything, like like everything in one setting? Do I just sit, it, has, have I ever shared everything in one body of work? No, you guys know, and especially those of you who are certified who've worked with me closely one-on-one, -on -one, I am strategic about what I share. I share my stories in ways to be strategic in my marketing in order to get my points across, in order to help people. This felt very different, okay? All of a sudden, I felt anxiety set in that morning, early in the morning in the hotel.
I'm in the suite. I'm out in the living room area. Carrie's back in the room asleep. And all of a sudden, guys, just anxiousness. And I was like, Oh, whoa, I'm not ready. I'm not ready for this. God, what are we doing? I thought I knew what we were doing. I'm confused. I set it down. I go in. I lay down next to Carrie. And I was almost in tears because the overwhelming sense of anxiety about what people will think, rejection, th fearing, you know, what being judged, right? All those fears coming in over me as I think about sharing everything in one body of work in this new book. We come home that day and I had told myself I was going to start writing again when I got home that day. Nope. Anxiousness, overwhelm, anxious, fear, overwhelm. I identified it that afternoon as I'm sitting at home. I'm like, okay, wait a minute. I'm scared. God, I'm scared. God, I, what are, where are you taking me? What are we doing? I thought I knew what we were doing. I'm scared. This doesn't feel safe. This, uh, this is out of my comfort zone. I identified the fear and I said, and I admitted it. I'm afraid. Whew, God, this is a lot. I don't know if people are ready for this. I don't know if I'm ready for this. So I I, once I identified the fear, I said, okay, Rebecca, you can have your moment. This is how I talk to myself. I'm just, I'm just pu pulling back the veil, guys. This is how I talk to myself. This is how I work through my own shit. I'm sitting there. Okay, I'm afraid. I'm admitting to myself that I'm afraid. I know that feeling of anxiousness and I'm able to identify it as fear. Okay, I'm afraid. I said, okay, have your moment, Rebecca. You're not going to write this afternoon. But I said, tomorrow morning when you wake up, you are going to write and you're going to write whatever God's putting on your heart to write. And I took my phone and I literally set an alarm on my phone for when I was going to wake up the next morning. And it said, writing the new book. And I set the alarm because I gave, I gave my fear a deadline. I gave my fear a deadline. I don't care how I'm feeling right this second. Tomorrow morning, I'm waking up and I'm going to be obedient to what the spirit's leading me to do. I, because why? Because we don't have time to procrastinate. Because there, you don't have time to be delaying what God is calling you to do. Who am I talking to this morning? There's some things God's calling you to do, but you keep holding off, pushing off, putting it away. You, you don't face the fear. You don't face the anxiousness. You don't face the doubts and insecurities. And instead, you allow that to stir and stew and you just marinate in that. And you one day goes into the next, into three, into four, into a week till you just put it on the back burner and you start going in a different direction. But then you're doing that out of a sense of anxiousness and overwhelm. Now, nothing is flowing because you're not being obedient to the spirit. Who am I talking to this morning? Who am I talking to this morning? Right? That hello, hello, now fear and procrastin procrastination set in. Now, now you find yourself going over trying to do other things that God didn't even call you to do because you're trying to do things that feel comfortable, that seem like a good idea, but it's not conquering the fears. Now you're not aligned. Now the next thing you know, week by week by week, you're just steadily falling off steadily, right? Who can relate? Donna, Bree, who can relate, right? And now next thing you know, you're way off. You'll, you could wake up 20 days later and be like, what is wrong with me? Now you're trying to get back into your meditation. You're trying, because all of this throws off, throws you off spiritually. Don't get it twisted. You may even think that you're still meditating every day, but you're not really going in. You're not really aligning because you're still trying to avoid the thing that you're not wanting to face. You're in denial, right? So you keep trying to deflect over to other things. You may be somebody who even tries to make problems with other things. Now it's a problem with your man. Now it's a problem with your kids. Now it's a problem with your money. Now it's a problem. The truth is, is you're not being obedient to the spirit. So because you're not obedient to the spirit, now everything's off. When you are out of spiritual alignment, everything starts to get off, off, off. Because you're not following the flow.
God's calling you to conquer your fears. He's calling you to heal the hurting places. He's calling you to heal the self-esteem. He's calling you to, to overcome the insecurities and self-doubts. He's calling you into confidence. The very thing that you're avoiding is the very key to unlock the door, to open up the door to destiny, open up the door to success. This is the cost to be the boss. Guess what? Some of you have got to toughen up. You've got to toughen up. You've got to develop thicker skin. You're going to have to get into your warrior stance and you're going to have to make up your mind. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? Because there is no time to be playing patty cake with where God is calling you to. There's no time for you to be passive and weak and letting yourself off the hook. The things you're asking God for are going to require sacrifices sacrifices. What are the sacrifices? The sacrifice is your ego. The sacrifice is your fear. The sacrifice is you could, that little negative self talk, that voice inside your head that keeps putting you down instead of lifting you up. That these are the sacrifices to success. Everyone wants to make it so outside of you. Oh, it's time. It's your kids. It's, it's this, it's that. No, what is the sacrifice? The sacrifice is obedience. The sacrifice is courage. You've got to be brave to walk this walk. You have got to wake up every day and make up your mind. I'm going to do the hard things. Holy ghost. I woke up this morning. And it, it hit me. I was just, some of you, I, God just had you on my spirit. This video has been in my spirit all morning and you see how late I am coming on. And, and, but he wouldn't let it off my mind. Every time I would get busy to do something else, this would come back on my mind. Some of you have underestimated the cost, the cost. You keep thinking this is supposed to be easier. You keep thinking and saying, why is this so hard? Why can't I seem to get over? Why am I not getting my breakthrough? Why am I not seeing the results I want? Because you're playing too easy. You're playing soft. You think this is, do you think that being a millionaire is supposed to be easy? Do you think that changing people's lives is supposed to be easy? Do you think that the business we are in of coaching is not, let me explain to you who we are. We are spiritual warriors saving souls from the brink of destruction, bringing and snatching back souls from hopelessness, helplessness, self-destruction. People we are, who are assigned to us are stuck, hurting. Without your guidance, their life will be on a, a, a trajectory of destruction. Maybe not physical death, but spiritual, emotional, mental death. Lack of love, lack of balance, trauma, crisis, violence, you name it. Until you get positioned, why do you think you're fought so hard? Do you think this is supposed to be easy? Do you think when so much is on the line, this is supposed to be easy? No, the enemy knows who you are. Even if you don't know who you are, the enemy knows who you are. He does not want you in position to do this work. He doesn't want you interceding for parents and people going through divorce. He doesn't want you interceding for people who are on the brink of, 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 disaster, people who are looking to kill themselves, people who are ready to give up. Does he want you in position to snatch people back from the brink? Does he want you in position to stand in the gap for the lost and the hopeless and the hurting? Does he want you to be standing in the gap for the people who feel like they've messed up so many times that they feel like all hope is lost? No, he doesn't want you standing in the gap. No, he doesn't want you ready. No, he doesn't want you doing videos. No, he doesn't want you reaching the lost. No. And it's even personal. No, he don't want add, to add some zeros to your bank account where you're empowered and your family comes out of lack and you walk in empowerment and peace and healing and wholeness. And this begins to be an overflow into your children's lives and your grandchildren's lives to leave a legacy to your great grandchildren and great, great grandchildren that the, the, the disastrous cycles are broken 
repetitive cycles of abuse and lack, poverty, low self-esteem, bad health, that all these things begin to be broken off of your generational, your legacy begins to change. Why? Because of you. Do you think it's supposed to be easy? Do you think anything I've given you to do in certification? Yeah, the checklist seems easy, but when you go to do it, all of a sudden, here comes anxiety. Here comes self-doubt. Oh my God, Rebecca, you want me to do what? You want me to talk about what publicly? You want me to tell my stories? You want me, whoa, I'm not ready. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why did this sound, sound so easy until I get ready to go and execute it? And now I'm struggling. Now I'm hurting. Now every issue I've been facing my whole life is facing me in the face. And I have to look at myself in the mirror and I have to overcome me. Me, I have to overcome myself. Now, is it easier for me than it is for you at this juncture, at this time in this season? Yes, why? Because I have a track record with God and there is a positive reinforcement in my life that in even when fear creeps in, I think back on the times when I overcame the fear and I think back on the times when I've been obedient to the spirit and I did it scared and the, oh my God, the overflow, the reward of listening, the reward of obedience, the reward of pushing through the fear and overcoming my own issues. The reward is so great that I, when I recognize it and say, I'm afraid, God, I'm afraid, help me. Then I remember, wait a minute. Ooh, this is one of those moments. Oh God, you about to do something really big. Oh, this is about to be off the chain. Then I can get excited and I can wake up the next morning with the alarm on my phone that says, write the new book. And I get to writing. Why? Why do I get to writing? Because I'm being obedient to the spirit. And once I get to writing, what I was so afraid of isn't even real. 99% of the fear isn't even real because as I begin to write it, it isn't even everything that I was afraid of. And why was I so afraid to do this? This isn't even that hard. Oh, wow, it's totally different than what I thought. Why is it easier for me? Because I recognize you have to begin to have a track record. You've got to begin to have an experience and new habits that create a mindset around fearlessness fearlessness. You have to refuse to accept fear in any area of your life. You have to refuse to accept anxiety in any area of your life. I recognize fear when it comes and I capture it and I analyze it. Why am I afraid? Where did this come from? Oh no, we're not going to just sit in this. This is unacceptable. Fear is unacceptable. I refuse. Fear is not of God. It's not from me. It is my ego fighting with the spirit. It's not real. And then I go work and I begin to be obedient to what God's calling me to do. This book is about to blow up. This book is about to change lives. This book, guys, in this morning in meditation, I was quiet. He showed me a whole nother part to this book. And I'm just sitting here like, this is what we're doing, God? Really? We're just going to tell people all my business. We just going to really tell my whole life story in this book? That's what this book is? I thought this was so different. I did not, I did not know what we were going to do. This is the cost to be the boss. For spirit-led coaches, for healers. This is the cost. It is. I don't care what strategy you have. I don't care if you have a checklist of steps one through 16 and you've got a perfect, perfect marching orders to tell you how to execute your business. I give you guys all kinds of checklists and workbooks. But if you are not spiritually aligned and you are not ready to overcome your fears, you're not ready to spiritually lead. 
and God is calling you into leadership. What is required of you of leadership is personal accountability. Personal accountability. The very thing that you're avoiding is the very thing that is the key to unlock the door to answer your prayers, to take you to the next level. The very thing you don't want to do, the very thing you don't want to talk about, the very thing that you're holding back on. The ve- Listen, there was a coach in summer certification and I've known her for several years. She took she worked with me one on one in her coaching courses and several of my courses and I got to know her well. And we were in the middle of summer certification and it came time to really start creating our signature premium courses. And she'd been trying to focus on this other stuff. She'd been trying to focus over here on health and wellness. But I knew I see I knew her truth. I knew stuff that she'd been through, that she wasn't ready to talk about. So all these years, I've just been patient with their patient, with their waiting. And in the middle of summer certification, we were in class one day, starting to review the signature premium courses. And she came on and guys, she said, Rebecca, I don't know. Something has shifted. I began to answer the questions about what should my first signature premium course be. And it just, as I answered those questions, it it began to shift. And she said, I am going to coach on sexual trauma and sexual trauma recovery and healing. And man, listen, guys, you see, see, if you don't know where someone's been and if you don't know someone's story, it's hard to understand the magnitude of that breakthrough. It's hard to understand that heaven is rejoicing at her surrendering to do what she's really been called to do instead of trying to do something over here because it was her comfort zone and it wasn't ha- causing her to have to face the pain face the issues. See, the very thing God is calling you to do is also what is crucial to your own healing, to your own breakthrough. Guess what? She begins to go in the direction. She accepts it. She surrendered and submitted to what God was calling, truly calling her to do. Guess what? That's her next level breakthrough. That brings healing and closure to that season and the things she's been through, through her obedience. Obedience to the spirit. She's now, God is going to add his super to her natural and everything in her coaching business will be wide open. And sure enough, she came in the next class said, listen, everything's flowing. Whereas everything had been so hard and she was struggling and she couldn't come up with courses and names. Now, when she surrendered, everything just began to flow. Everything began to flow. The ideas, the creativity, innovative ideas around the coaching and the courses and who our clients are. A boldness began to come over her. Listen, in that class where she really, truly accepted the calling that's on her life, I just began to praise God in the middle of class. I don't care. We in class, but honey, listen, it's fellowship too. I began to praise God. The spirit of God fell so heavy on me inside of class that day. I just had to stop for a second. I could have run around that room. I was so excited. Why? Because heaven is rejoicing. Angels were rejoicing. Why? Because this is the work that will shift not only her life, but the people she's called to. Her obedience unlocks the doors for her own abundance and breakthrough and the lives and souls that are assigned to her. What are you avoiding? What are the sacrifices that need to be made? Is it your ego, fear, self-doubt? insecurities? Do you keep trying to coach on this because it's what you know or feel safe when God really has so many experiences you've been through where God needs you in these areas to speak and preach and teach and coach to reach the people who have been through similar things? The work you're avoiding is the key to your breakthrough. The work 
you're avoiding. And I hear God. Some of you are avoiding the work because you don't want to tell the truth. You're afraid to out people. You're afraid to tell the truth of who hurt you. You're you're afraid of them knowing, oh, they're going to know I'm talking about my ex-husband. They're going to know I'm talking about my uncle. They're going to know I'm talking about my mom. They're going to know I'm talking about. You cannot allow the fear of what people think about you. And what people are going to say to hold you back from doing what God's called you to do. God will open doors. He will make a way. He will usher you. He will protect you. He will make a way out of no way. He will give you the words to say. He'll give you the words to say. To be able to orchestrate that thing in just the right way. And guess what? Some people need to be confronted. Some people need to be called out. Some people need to be accountable for some of the things they've done. Speaking your truth is never wrong. It's never wrong. Your truth is your truth. Not that's right. Brie, I say it all the time. They should have behaved better. They should have behaved better. Listen, this is what God had on my spirit this morning. (laughs) The cost to be the boss. The cost to be the boss. Amen. Happy Monday, coaches. I love you. I love you. I love you. Listen, fall certification is sold out. But if anyone inside of this circle knows they need to be in certification, make sure you email us. Make sure you are in there. Okay. I know it's late. We're already getting started. But listen, if you know you need to be in fall certification, make sure you're in there. It's life changing. It's not too late for you. We can make it happen for you because you're inside of the millionaire coach circle. All right. I love you guys. Blessings in abundance. Talk to you guys soon. Let's have it a great week. Let's make it productive. All right. Love you.